a professional. Gogol 13. If you're on his hit list, you're already dead. Hey, that's someone else's quote. Hi, my name is Alex, and I want to talk about Gogol 13 in the first of many videos under the category Where's the Anime Reboot? Gogol 13 is the manliest assassin manga ever, starring Duke Togo, aka Gogol 13, aka the manliest assassin ever. The stories are completely episodic, following Gogol 13 in his assignments to snipe people in exchange for $3 million. Duke Togo is a deadly and stoic ladies' man who could be compared to James Bond, Agent 47, John Wick, The Punisher, and the T-800 from the first Terminator movie. While Duke Togo is known for his manliness, serious demeanor, and idiosyncrasies, such as not wanting his back exposed, Gogol 13, the emotionless killer known as the pro among pros, is ironically terrified of dying. And the fear of death is the only thing that keeps us from danger. So long as you fear death, you can stay among the living. He uses the fear of death as a survival instinct which allows him to fight through his deadly scenarios. Unlike most manly characters who tend to be heroic, Gogol 13 is a very scary man. Most people would describe him as a bland character or a Gary Stu, since he's mostly silent and an expert in everything. But I view Duke as a terrifying killing machine. He puts himself through a lot of danger and tedious tasks, but manages to have enough patience to outlast anything. The man stood still for 10 hours just to kill somebody. And in another episode, Gogol got arrested and breaks someone out of prison just to kill him. And who can forget that one time when he used a balloon and a toy gun? Those were good times. Gogol 13 does have emotions, but he puts them away like a Vulcan from Star Trek. The man operates on logic and has an understanding how humans react. Despite being a killer, Duke believes in love. Here's a video link for that topic. For a man who's apparently scared yet willing to kill anybody in his line of work, Gogol 13 possibly represents the most credible conduct expected of an assassin. Snakes, dogs, humans, all leave corpses. They're all the same to me. I haven't seen any character who's this cold yet manages to be in this neutral state of not being totally evil, but not a righteous hero either. Depending who hires him, Gogol 13 may end up saving more lives than the ones he puts in body bags. Recently, certain retro anime have been coming back, and it baffles me how this one series hasn't returned since March 27, 2009. Strangely, the 2008 anime OST was either reused or sampled, as it appears in the Blackjack Final OVAs. Aside from that, Gogo 13 has been in a few pachinko since then and now, but I hate that, there's also a couple of anime references and products due to his popularity in Japan. I'm still surprised his usage in a military recruitment advertisement. However, his lack of appearances is in context to an anime adaptation, as the manga has been present in modern times. The manga is literally in the same position as Berserk. The legendary Gekiga author, Takao Saito, passed away, and the series is continuing without him. So many vintage manga cars just left around the same time, I feel bad I haven't made a video about it. Most of Gogol 13's success was because of Takao Saito, spending his whole life on it. Gogol 13 has been running for decades since 1968 with a total of 203 volumes and counting. The Gogol 13 manga has managed a 50 year anniversary in 2018 and nothing came out of it. Far as I could find, there was only a brief art gallery, but Gogol 13 wasn't even the focus. The last new material it got was a manga spin off starring Dave. You know, Dave. That guy. Eh, what's next? Gogol 13 in an Isekai spin-off? Actually, that might be a great idea, seeing how good these two have been doing. 
I've always thought Gold Routine should be treated like Lupin the Third because Lupin always has something new every year. Prior to the woman called Fujiko Mine, Lupin was being released through TV specials, OVAs, and movies. Why can't Gold Routine do the same? TMS has been heavily involved with Lupin the Third and Detective Conan, so adding another ongoing series could be feasible. They've even been able to work on other televised projects such as Baki and Megalobox and their huge resume of Eastern and Western animation. I'm not asking for a big budget movie on a yearly basis, how about just doing a good episode length feature done once per year? It could be something brief like The Punisher, Dirty Laundry, a 10 minute short film. <laughs> I can see Gogo 13 making appearances like this as a compromise if an anime TV series can't happen. After seeing The Punisher in anime form, I really wish Gogo 13 would come back. Frank Castle is like a Western Duke Togo as he managed to be a manly intimidator. The anime feature I'm referring to is Avengers Confidential, Black Widow, and Punisher. It's done by Madhouse, so it looks amazing. Another big prop goes to the character designer, which is Yutaka Minoa who needs more modern stuff to work on. His resume includes the classic anime movies Ninja Scroll and Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust. Would you look at that? He's involved with Lupin the Third via the Koikiverse movies. I'm surprised Yutaka Minoa didn't work on Megalobox, because everyone else did. Also, Himuro Genma looks like Rikishi to me. Maybe there's this whole Toro Rikishi family tree we don't know about. Gogo 13 reboot, I already picked some people for the heads of animation. One being Yutaka Minoa, but the rest of them are interchangeably tied with Megalobox and Lupin the Third. Specifically, the Lupin the Third movies directed by Takeshi Koike, or Koike vs. Lupin. Yo Moriyama is best known for directing Megalobox. Additionally, he illustrated the series' promo and concept art. The concept sketches include a cancelled Rikishi prequel. And if you look into his credits, Yomoriyama also worked with Takeshi Koike for two Lupin movies. Meanwhile, there's Shimizu Hiroshi, who's a Studio Ghibli key animator. He was a character designer for Megalobox and a key animator in the Koikeverse Lupin III. Both Shimizu and Moriyama were animation directors for the woman called Fujiko Mine. It all ties together. And it so happens, Takeshi Koike did the character designs for the anime you're seeing on screen purpose of all those credits is these people are likely the best candidates for bringing back Gogo 13. Their art styles all blend in together. TMS has worked with these men and they did produce Gogo 13's first anime debut in the movie Gogo 13 The Professional. The current Koikiverse Lupin movies are brimming with style and gave Lupin his balls back. This gritty world of thieves and assassins is so suitable for a new Gogo 13 anime. The 2008 series occasionally had some beautiful visuals, mainly with background shots, but it could use a little more flair. Something in the vein of The Professional, which Osamu Dezaki filled the movie with his iconic postcard memories and layouts. The look of that movie is very westernized with all of these extra lines that made it resemble a pulp comic. The heavy shading combined with garish colors also give it the look of pop art seen in comics around the 80s and 90s. Meanwhile, the 2008 anime is very muted by comparison. This version is grounded in reality, well, some type of reality. While the scenery can be pretty to look at, I miss the creative coloring of the professional. The movie is certainly over the top, but I genuinely love how bold it is to take these visual risks. I feel a new Gogo 13 anime should find a balance of vibrant colors and thick shadows. The 2008 series had a few shots that used these choices, but I wish the whole show looked like that. Another example I can think of that semi-new is Hero Man, which features a few of those comic book pop art in some episodes. I guess what I'm getting at is, I want Gogo 13 to look like the Deadshot segment from Batman Gotham Knight. Just stare at it and admire how good it looks. Or the other option is, I want Gogo 13 to look like Black Dynamite. 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 Look at all those contours formed by heavy shadows and deep colors. Whatever art style it chooses, I want these people to do it. 
I want to see Gogo 13 reimagined as a really slick, manly anime. I want it to be so cool and so manly that it has a jazz soundtrack mixed with synthesizers. The manga has made history by creating Gekika, dramatic pictures. <laughs> That alone should be enough to justify Gogo 13 having a presence in animation. How about celebrating the 55th anniversary in 2023 with a new anime? Because the 50th passed in 2018 and nothing happened. Currently, there's talks of another manga spin-off about a super talented girl who may have Duke Togo DNA. But who's asking for these things? Honestly, for a Japanese vintage title to make some sort of comeback or western reception, it's gonna need an anime that people could share clips online. Because if the web has taught me anything, a show could get very popular once it hits social media, or something can suck really hard and people will still talk about it. In a contemporary internet age where people are concerned about hetero masculinity, here's a potential solution. I'd rather go for a Fist of the North Star reboot, but that's a talk for another time. My name is Alex and thank you to the patrons and thank you for watching my channel. And remember, don't stand behind him if you value their life. I mean, Rohan knows about that.